Happy Tuesday to you, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Beautiful day up here in the mountains today. It's actually gorgeous out here. Look at that. I'm in short sleeve shirts. Doing great. Well, hey, I'm outdoors, but I'm talking about indoors. I'm talking about housebreaking your new puppy that you may have gotten for Christmas or a little bit before, a little bit after. Or we're talking about that older dog that you adopted and you just need to get a house broken because no one else bothered to do that. Okay, so when we talk about housebreaking up until this point, until tomorrow anyway, tomorrow I'm going to wrap up the housebreaking series talking about pee pads tomorrow and potty pads and all that sort of stuff for those people who do not have the ability or the desire to have their dogs go potty outside. But today I'm going to wrap up talking about how we get our dogs to go outside. And again, what we're doing is creating two separate habitats. Remember, young mammals interact with their environment. They learn from their environment by interacting with it, getting feedback from that environment continuously. And that's your job is to make sure they get continuous feedback that says this. When you go in my house, that's bad. That's just no good. You go outside, that's all good. That is all good. That's the whole premises behind it. Everything I've told you to do up to this point has been centered around making sure that you get that thing done. Making sure, because that's what it's all about. Okay, so today I want to talk a little bit about feeding. Feeding your dog. This is important. You've got to have schedules for feeding. You have to know what you're feeding, because again, we are talking about bodily waste, especially when it comes to solid food. Your dog is a predator by an anatomical standpoint, with a very simple digestive system. One in where it just goes here, gets on down to that digestion system there, the stomach area, and gets immediately processing that, trying to turn whatever it is that you ate into life-sustaining energy. And do it quickly. We predators don't have complex digestive systems needed to break down a whole bunch of plant cellulose or anything of that sort there. We don't need to do that. We need to eat meat and we need to get it quickly and we need to turn it back into energy quickly to keep us warm, give us more energy, to simply go get more energy. Keep that in mind because it's very important. So many people create a heartache for their housebreaking, make it a lot harder to get done, a lot lengthier in time to get done, simply because they don't pay attention to their dog's feeding. Okay, so right off the bat, just kind of know this. Canned food or fresh food will usually pass through a young dog. When I say young, under about 16 weeks of age, a little bit older, maybe a little less. Again, every little individual mammal ages differently, just like we do. So I'm going to kind of just give you some little parameters. And of course, they can stretch and they can contract. Always keep that in mind when it comes to behavior and also with the body to a certain degree. So canned food or fresh food, if you feed your dogs fresh food, It'll typically move to that young dog system in about four to six hours. Note, four to six hours, okay? Kibble, I don't care what you feed. I don't care. I'm not talking about that today. That'll be coming up in a mini series I'm going to do on canine nutrition. But if you're feeding dry kibble, it will typically take about eight to 10 hours to go through the system. Now, this is important to know because what this, that information allows you to have some predictability. Hey, I kind of have an idea when my dogs might have to go. Remember I told you all those times that your dog normally will go after any long sleeping period, after any high activity, after eating, after eating, and of course, after drinking a large volume of water. Talking about food right now. That's wonderful. When I'm housebreaking my own dogs, and again, we're going to be doing that coming up here soon here, just a couple more weeks, we get our new puppy. We will be shifting feeding schedule, especially that last meal of the day. I know this, okay? So what am I going to feed? Probably feed whatever the breeder's been feeding for a couple of weeks, whether I like it or not. Just cut down on the, the young puppy stress. I recommend that you do the same thing. Don't, don't go upset in the apple cart right off the bat. Your puppy's already going to be stressed moving into your household. And if you go changing the diet on that puppy, guarantee you're going to create all sorts of problems. Ease into the new diet. Ease into it. Okay, but either way, if that puppy comes to me eating kibble, then I'm going to push that last meal to about an hour before I typically go to bed. And that, by doing that, I am going to give that puppy's body plenty of time to process that and arrive about the time I'm going to get up. One of the mistakes that we make is we feed our young puppies about the same time that we typically have dinner. And I guess that can range anywhere for anyone from about 5 p.m. to about 7, 8 o'clock. Well, you just got to play by ear. You know, you need a time. When are you going to go to bed if you really want to try and get a good night's sleep? Move that last feeding meal about an hour before you go to sleep. 
give it to your pup, let them eat, take them out right after they eat, take them out again right before you go to bed. And then now while they're sleeping, their body will work on that food. No different than you. You eat a big meal right about an hour before you go to bed and your body will work on it. And a lot of people, the older they get, they go, oh, that was a bad move. <laughs> That's artificial intelligence. Bad move. I learned not to do that. I'm a real early eater in the evening and also an early riser. So again, I'm going to time that baby. So that last meal, though, is again, an hour before I go to bed. If you do that, that's definitely going to help that puppy get through the night without waking up in the middle of the night. Uh, do, do know eight and a half week old puppies to about 11 weeks. Whether you do that or not, they may still wake up in the middle of the night. They, they just have fast, slow metabolisms. But I guarantee you, after three months of age, they're going to start shifting real quickly into that same uh, time schedule I told you about, kibble and fresh food. As far as morning feeds go, whenever you want to. Just, just go ahead and get it done. And also, I'm one of these people that unless I own a very large dog, like a big Newfoundland, big Mastiff, big Great Dane, something like that, I will shift medium-sized dogs. I typically call those about 65 pounds and, and less, uh, like with Captain. I shifted Captain over to a twice-a-day feeding when he was three months of age. I did not go to three day, three times a day. And a lot of you always ask that, when should I shift to a two times a day feeding? And not to get into that too deep, because that will come up in our canine nutrition mini-series. But I will tell you this much. Most dogs will kind of tell you, because they just don't really kind of eat that noon meal. If you just split up the cal caloric intake to beginning in the day and end of the day, your dog's not going to starve to death. And just kind of think of this. One thing for sure, definitely don't do this, is allow your puppy to graze. Do not. So many people leave food bowls down, food in it, and they just let their dog eat when they want to. Bad. Bad move. Don't do that. You can do that later if you want to. I advise you never do it. But again, it's your dog. Do what you wish. Whatever makes you happy lowers your blood pressure. But I'm telling you this. Think about it. Food constantly in. Food needs to be constantly coming out. And by allowing your puppy to graze with that super fast metabolism, you just lost all sense of predictability. Yeah, and predictability, when you lose that, means you don't catch your puppy. And when you don't catch your puppy, the puppy doesn't learn that it's dangerous to go in the house, just dangerous to go in front of you. If, you're, if you allow your dogs to graze, not your puppy. No way. You feed, you allow your puppy about 10 to 15 minutes to eat. If it doesn't eat, take it away. Okay, so it didn't eat all of its food. Big deal. Big deal. Try to give that caloric makeup in that evening meal if you can. But if not, no big deal. These are smart mammals. They're really smart. And as soon as they're convinced that that little bowl of yours grew legs and they'll run off in about 15 minutes, oh, they'll eat. They will eat. And that's plenty of time for a young puppy. That is plenty. Heck, every dog I've ever owned, be, yeah, some of them walked up. Yeah, I, mean, I guess when they were with the breeder, they got to eat whenever they wanted to eat. But when they arrived at my house, they walked up, took a couple bites, walked away. Disappeared. Bowl's gone. Never lasted more than two days. Never lasted more than two days. And they're going, oh, Lord. As soon as that food sets down, I'm on it. And all of our dogs eat very quickly. They eat within about a minute. And it's, it's all done. You're done. Now go wash the bowls. And you're done with that. Got predictability. Take your puppy out. Now watch your puppy as well. Start setting your little watch. Here we go. So in about four to six hours, I can expect you to have to go again. Yeah, it sure does time those breaks if you work away from the home, come home, when they let the puppy out. Again, if you do not allow your puppy to graze and you go by the schedule that I told you, you will A, get to sleep better throughout the night, and B, you'll also have a lot more predictability during the day, which is key to successful housebreaking. Okay, another thing I want to talk about, uh, I'm not going to spend any, really any time on it, is potty bells. A lot of us, we're humans, we get busy doing other things. We would certainly love to have our dogs go to the door, ring a set of bells, and say, hey, come let me out. Go back and watch day 111. That's 111. Go watch that day, and you will be able to hear me and, and talk about potty bells. What's good, what's bad. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to get through this video. Go watch day 111, and I talk all about those. Okay, and then the last thing I want to talk about for today is, you know what? My housebreaking training for my new puppy arriving here soon is going to be made a whole lot easier because we have three dogs already that are housebroken. Mimicry. Oh, gosh, I love mimicry. I love it. That young pup is going to go outside with the other dogs and see the other dogs go potty, 
And when that puppy sees them go potty, that is just a, one of the most wonderful and beginning cases of goal-directed emulation, if there ever was one. That's your puppy going, okay, so obviously that's what we do out here. We go potty because all the rest of you guys are going potty, so I guess I'll go potty as well. Mimicry. If you have dogs already in your household that are housebroken, they let them teach your young puppy. Let them teach it. Just keep in mind, make sure the pup does indeed go. Make sure it doesn't partially go and then come racing back in your house because if it did, then you need to be super vigilant at that moment. But yes, take advantage of any dogs that you own or can borrow <laughs> as long as they all get along. Again, I'm going to let this puppy go out as long as I don't have any sort of fights or any issues like that. And I don't for foresee those, but if you do, then of course, erase everything I just said. You don't want your puppy going down and getting eaten by your other dog. No way. Uh, but again, if it's all fine, there's not an issue with it, yes, let them go out and learn. Even at a distance, even if you have two dogs on the leash because you're worried about the older dog picking on the little puppy, take them out, both out on the leash. So what? And now when the puppy sees the other dog go, especially if it smells where the other dog goes, that's going to trigger a response in your animals, kind of like a signal, and they're going to immediately respond to it, and they're going to go potty as well. So yeah, man, I can't wait. That's, <laughs> Captain, I, I need you, buddy. I need you. I need you, Poe. I need you, Dave. I need all of you guys to help me with this new puppy, get through the system, uh, this process a whole lot easier. Okay, well, that's it. Tomorrow, I will wrap up the housebreaking series. Uh, I'm going to talk about pee pads. I wasn't going to talk about it today, but that needs a little bit of effort put to it, a little bit more than what I want to spend on the video today with you. Uh, we'll talk about pee pads and reasons why you might want to use those. Uh, again, it all depends on lifestyle locations, so on and so forth. But we'll cover it in detail tomorrow. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Beautiful day in the mountains. Got a lot of work to get done here today. And I hope I can get in a hike uh, later on this afternoon. Make sure you have a great training day. Be safe, be well, and just keep plugging away at that house break if that's what you're working on. And I'll tune in with you guys again tomorrow. Take care.